Hey, John Thorburn here. This is Keeping the Print Quality High with Canon Image Press and PrismaSync Color Print Server. Let's get started. Let's begin G7 Media Family Calibration. Choose the G7 Uncoated Family and the G7 Uncoated Media. Turn off the ILS and use Halftone Normal as basis for fewer sheets to measure. The inline spectrophotometer is available on some, but not all models of image press, so for this video, we'll choose to turn the ILS option off to show the method available to all models, which is measuring using the X-Rite i1 Pro 2 instrument. The system prepares the calibration charts, warms up the printer, and prints the charts. Plug in the i1 Pro 2 and initialize it for hand measurement. Six sheets have to be measured. You can see from the screen display that it's four rows per sheet. The color patches being measured are a combination of calibration and color profiling patches. Page 4 are the standard calibration patches. Throughout the other pages are target patches for gray balance and color profiling for custom media output profiles. Measurements are done. Feedback information about the process appears. Measurement accuracy tells us about the trustworthiness of the measurement process. Output profile information tells us about the calibration date and time. Gamut displays a 3D rendering of the color gamut that was created. Neutral color separation displays the CMYK separation logic. And G7 grayscale calibration displays special feedback on the accuracy of the mathematics toward achieving the G7 target. That is not, however, G7 verification. Our next step is to perform G7 verification on our paper. Turn off the inline spectro, warm up the printer, and print the verification pages. These two sheets will look more familiar to folks who know about the P2P target in the G7 process. These are the P2P gray patches, duplicated in multiple positions for data averaging, spanning two sheets of four rows per sheet. The green check mark means we passed G7 grayscale verification. Now we can see the target curves and the delta difference metrics down below. Measurement accuracy is trustworthy. We can move on ahead to color space validation. We choose our media, the validate menu, search for the validation we want, which is Grackle 2013 SCCA, Measure by hand, not with the ILS. SCCA is Substrate Corrected Colorimetric Aims. Initialize the i1 Pro 2 and measure the patches. This is the Idea Alliance Control Wedge 2013. We passed with Quality Level A. Touch on the green checkbox and we can see the delta difference metrics. We see the allowable range 2.5, 5.0, 5.0, 3.0 and our numbers, which were great. Now we're done with the process. Color begins with light. The biggest source of light on Earth is our sun. The sun radiates electromagnetic solar radiation. Earth is covered by a dense atmosphere that can scatter the shorter, bluer rays of incoming light. Earth's equator receives the strongest rays of the sun's light and heat. Light is made up of photons, pulsating packets of energy traveling through space. All photons travel at the same speed. Each photon has a specific energy level which determines its wavelength. The visible spectrum is electromagnetic energy between about 380 and 700 nanometers. Almost all the light we see consists of a blend of photons of many wavelengths. Color results from the unequal distribution of energy across the spectral wavelengths of visible light. 
the properties of a color can be analyzed using spectral curves. The wavelength measured in nanometers is used to distinguish the hue, which is always one or a proportion of two of the spectral colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. Multiple wavelengths at various energy amounts combine to produce a dominant wavelength, or dominant hue. Here is a green object. Here is a red object. The total amount of radiant energy across the wavelength distribution is used to distinguish the brightness, or the related qualities, of lightness-darkness of a color. The number of different wavelengths contained in a color, a few or many, is used to distinguish the saturation of that color. This green is saturated. This green is desaturated. Color is an event that occurs between a light source, an object, and the observer. Color is a sensation evoked in the observer by the wavelengths of light produced by the light source and modified by an object. Change any one of those three things and the color event becomes different, and we see different color. Let's examine the spectral curves of a few different light sources. Here is an example of daylight. Its exact composition changes with time of day and weather. This example has a correlated color temperature of 6,500 degrees Kelvin. It is bluish and it looks cool. Here is an example of a standard illuminant. A standard illuminant is a light source that has been measured by the International Commission on Illumination, more commonly known as the CIE. The standard illuminant is called D50. It describes a different kind of daylight that has a correlated color temperature of 5,000 degrees Kelvin. It is yellowish and it looks warm. The Kelvin scale is used to describe color temperature. Low numbers on the Kelvin scale are warm colors, visually speaking. High numbers on the Kelvin scale are cool colors. When the great Swiss theorist Johannes Itten taught cold warm color contrast, in his color class at the Bauhaus School, he described the extreme of cold warm contrast as blue-green pitted against red-orange. Gray balance is the linchpin that holds the balance between warm and cool colors. Here is the spectral curve of the red phosphor from an older cathode ray tube monitor. It is spiky. Spikiness in some light sources can lead to unexpected color matching or metamerism failures later when comparing printed sheets under different viewing conditions. What is usually called the color of an object is in reality its reflected color when it's illuminated by light. These curves are called spectral reflectance curves. Objects are made visible by light and by the placement of their shadows we recognize their shape and form. Objects in bright light are a source of reflected color just as shadows are the recipients of those color reflections. Here is the spectral reflectance curve of a magenta object. Magenta is not a spectral color found in the rainbow, but as its spectral reflectance curve indicates, it results from the absence of green light. The fundamental basis of color reproduction is the three-channeled design of the human retina. The retina is a nerve cell lining at the back of your eye. The nerve cells that respond to light are called photoreceptors and they come in two types, rods and cones. Rods are more sensitive than cones and provide us vision in low light conditions. We have many more rods than we do cones. Cones provide us our color vision. There are three kinds of cones. Those sensitive to the long wavelengths in the red region, the medium wavelengths in the green region, and the short wavelengths in the blue region. This three-component structure of color vision is called trichromacy. One very important aspect of human color vision is called opponency, or the opponent color theory. Color receptors in the retina work in antagonistic or opponent pairs. There are three opponent pairs, light-dark, red-green, yellow-blue. The processing of color opponency happens in a second stage after trichromatic processing. The opponent color signals then pass across the optic nerve to the brain for further cognitive processing. 
Thus, according to the theory, a color cannot simultaneously be light and dark, it cannot simultaneously be red and green, it cannot simultaneously be yellow and blue. This opponent colored design is used in the CIE color space called C-Lab, or LAB for short. LAB is used in many color management systems today. L for light dark, A for red green, B for yellow blue. The true complexity of dealing with color takes place in the interactions between a viewer, an object being viewed, its environment, and the temporal sequence of its viewing. The human visual system adapts its response to what is in its field of view. Adaptation is not instantaneous, it happens over time. It responds to changes rather than absolute physical magnitudes of stimulus properties. It responds to the nature of how we remember what we have seen. Our visual system has a dynamic response and adapts to the chromaticity or color of the illumination. This is called chromatic adaptation. It is when the appearance of objects are more or less preserved under different colored light sources. Chromatic adaptation involves cognitive mechanisms as well as physiological ones. Adaptation stabilizes after about one minute. The G7 gray balance method considers some of these complexities in the way that it determines its target recipe for CMY gray, based in part on the influence of the paper color. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.